The Apple Studio display sure has flaws, but let's consider whether it's worth it in the end. I'm gonna break this video down into two sections. The first we'll call, Rationally, Objectively, the Apple Studio display is kinda dumb. Section two we'll call, Yeah, but it's actually pretty amazing and I love it. Let's start with the first. I'm gonna list out all the dumb things about this display. Dumb in the context of a monitor that costs as much as the Apple Studio display. And all of these are a known quantity, so I'm not gonna go into tremendous depth on all of them, but maybe just make one or two points. Next, let's talk about how Studio Display connects with your other devices. No HDMI, no display port, not even two Thunderbolts, just one Thunderbolt input. Essentially, it works with only a Mac. And when I say a Mac, I mean one Mac. You can't even plug two Macs into this thing. No power button, no physical controls on this display whatsoever. Is that really a problem? It's clear that Apple only intends for this display to be used with a Mac. So therefore, all of the controls are accessible in Mac OS and no other way. So if you wanna plug in a Windows computer or any other kind of device, you have no control over the monitor unless you first plug it into a Mac and change whatever settings you wanna change and then plug it into the other device. But even so, it just makes so much more sense for a hardware device to have physical controls on it of some kind. 60 hertz, no promotion or no variable refresh rate. This is a single backlight LED panel. There's no HDR capabilities with this panel, even though it's pretty dang bright. It just does not have the contrast ratio to be true HDR. This is a concern, I guess, if you think about future proofing and the inevitability of HDR content becoming more and more prevalent. I guess it all depends on when and if that actually happens. It's not even 10 bit. And support for over a billion colors. Support for is the key phrase here. And at this price point, definitely should be. Like the lack of physical controls, the non-removable power cable isn't necessarily a problem unless something goes wrong. And also like I have the vase amount version and just taking it out of the box and then setting it up on my desk or like laying it on my desk and then attaching the vase amount to it, having the power cable there like throughout that whole process, it was just kind of weird because it can definitely be in the way, something you have to manage. And then if you ever want to move, like if you move your office, if you move your house, whatever, it just makes a lot more sense to be able to remove that power cable, package it up sort of separately, as opposed to having it always connected to the monitor. And the stand allows you to tilt the display up to 30 degrees. Objectively, they're well designed and function okay, I guess, but it's insane that you have to spend $400 extra on top of the display to get a height adjustable stand. In the main role, I'm not sure if I said that those stands are well designed. They're obviously not well designed. I mean, they look nice. I guess they're, they're aesthetically well designed, but functionally, they pretty much suck. The basic stand, all it does is tilt. But even just having the ability to swivel the monitor, like you have to just move the whole stand. The height and tilt adjustable one is $400. And again, there's no swivel action. There's no rotation. I mean, you really have to not spend any money on a, on a, on a generic monitor to get something as limited in functionality. Or the monitor is just some sort of like gigantic, weird, uh, non-standard form factor where kind of like those basic adjustments just wouldn't work. It solves problems that Apple created and or could solve in software. Like Mac OS has a hard time waking up external monitors. Why? The solution for that should not be to spend $1,600 on an Apple monitor. Mac resolution scaling. It's not necessarily a problem, but you'll see a lot of people talk about how 4K UHD does not scale perfectly and it has slight issues that you might not like. I think all of that is overblown. 4K UHD looks pretty dang good on Mac OS just like it looks good on anything else. But this monitor fixes that issue by having perfect resolution scaling with Mac OS. I actually don't think that this is necessarily overpriced when you compare it against every other 5K monitor in existence. They're all over a thousand dollars. There just aren't that many. So it must be like a supply and demand issue. But what is out of whack is the fact that Apple will upcharge you so much for basic functionality. I'll let you decide how much any of those actually matter to you. For me, the biggest single flaw of the Apple Studio display is that it only has one input. That is just 
I don't even know. In researching for this video, one thing I know people are interested in is how and if this works with a Windows computer. Yes, but the caveats are stacked up pretty high. The easiest way to do it is if you have a relatively new laptop that has USB-C or Thunderbolt display out built into it. On the desktop side, I don't know of very many computers that have the requisite display outputs built in. However, I happen to have one that does. I had this motherboard and I didn't buy it intending to use my computer with the Apple Studio display. I've had this for most of the year. I'm not even sure if there's any other motherboards out there that have this functionality. It just is a coincidence that I have this one and it, it will support the Apple Studio display and it does it in a weird way. This motherboard specifically has Thunderbolt 4 support. It's got two USB-C ports, so they support Thunderbolt 4 out of the, of the motherboard. And then it also has two display outputs. So you can typically just plug in a display port to the motherboard and into a display to get graphics out of your computer. However, these two outputs also are Thunderbolt 4 inputs. Very strange. So this motherboard comes with a short DisplayPort cable. So what you can do is take that DisplayPort cable, plug one end into your GPU, your discrete dedicated graphics card, and then plug the other end into the DisplayPort output of the motherboard, which is also a Thunderbolt 4 input. Yes, okay. And then you take the Thunderbolt cable from the Apple Studio display and plug it into one of the two Thunderbolt 4 ports on this motherboard, and there you go makes perfect sense. And or there is a specific KVM that supposedly works with this display up to 5K resolution, but it's pretty expensive, it's loud, it's hot, and it's very slow to switch. But even if you got it to work physically, if you jump through all the right hoops, there's no way to change the settings on the monitor without first plugging it into a Mac because there's no physical controls. And you might think that you could just take a cable like this and it would work, but it doesn't. So this is a DisplayPort cable and a USB-C cable on one end, but it's only designed to work taking the USB-C out from a source like a computer and then the DisplayPort into a monitor. I tried using the DisplayPort from my computer and the USB-C into the Apple Studio display and that doesn't work. Maybe there's a cable out there that basically reverses these two things, but I don't know. Despite all that negativity, the severely compromised design and functionality decisions that Apple made with this product, it's still kind of amazing and I love it. Here's why. Making it a 5K retina display. This is the deal with this monitor. It's Apple's whole retina thing. It's the same sharpness, clarity, color reproduction that you get across all of Apple's retina displays on your iPhone, your iPad, your MacBook, but just bigger. You can get really dang close to this monitor without seeing any pixels. In fact, I find that my vision is gonna blur before I see any pixels on this monitor. For an LED single backlight display, it's pretty dang bright. Retina searingly bright. Too bright, especially if you plug it into a Windows computer and find that you cannot adjust the brightness. It's accurate with a wide color gamut, I guess. I haven't tested it or calibrated it and Apple doesn't deign to list any kind of comprehensive specifications of its products. But from everything that I've seen from other creators and other outlets, it does have accurate color and it does cover essentially sRGB, Adobe RGB, and P3. Furthermore, and this is important to some people, is that it's consistent with other Apple devices. Let's call it Maccurate. Taking all those together, you have a really good looking display. It has the quality of looking at physical media, like a book or a magazine. It's something that Apple has obviously spent a lot of time and effort to really nail. So even though it's not 10 bit, it's not HDR capable, it's not even variable refresh rate, they nail it where it really matters. The stuff on the monitor looks amazing. These are by far the highest fidelity speakers we've ever created for the Mac. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this, but they are, really good for what they are and probably better than they have any right to be. They're not gonna compete with a decent pair of dedicated speakers or a decent pair of headphones. Here's the built-in webcam, by the way, which is something that I'm not even talking about in this video because it's just not that important to me, but if you wanted to see it, here it is. Here's a sound comparison between the internal speakers on the Apple Studio display versus the iLoud micro monitor desktop speakers that I would typically use.
But if you don't have those things or want those things to clutter up your life and your space, then you can absolutely get by with the sound that's coming out of the Apple Studio Display speakers. I listen to podcasts, watch YouTube videos, other kind of content. I'll even edit my videos until it gets to like the critical point of like mixing and really dialing in the sounds. But for the majority of the project that I'm working on, I can use the speakers in the ASD. So there you have it. There is a lot to not like about this display. It's hard to argue that the Apple Studio display doesn't look really good. It's obviously hard to capture the quality of a display on camera through YouTube. I mean, my cameras don't even output as high resolution as this display does. The things that it does really well, having lots of resolution and being really sharp, vibrant, crisp, and detailed, covering the most widely used profiles and color gamuts, and being color accurate. And the people who this display is for, you probably already know who you are. Digital artists, photographers, maybe even book designers or publishers, professions that I know nothing about, essentially. 4K UHD looks fine on Mac OS. There's not really any big issue with that. Of course, it's not gonna be as sharp and clear as this because it's 5K <laughs> and it just scales perfectly with Mac OS. But is that even worth it? Because you can get much newer display technologies with ostensibly better specifications and features for a lot cheaper than the Apple Studio display. And if you are somebody who wants to plug in multiple devices to a monitor at the same time, then this monitor is just not going to be a good choice. It's just, I, that's the one thing. I just can't even get over it. I hope you enjoyed this video or got something out of it. Let me know what you think about the Apple Studio display. Amazing monitor, overpriced, over-engineered piece of junk. Whatever the case is, leave your comments in the comments. Thanks for watching. Maybe I'll see you in another one.